Um, when you tackle spherical coordinates, um, it's not impossible, and, and just you know, take it piecemeal bit by bit. The Laplacian of spherical coordinates is not anything like the Laplacian and Cartesian coordinates. So this is what it is. Let me write it out for you. You can find this on the inside cover of your book too. So uh, dv by dr plus one over r squared sine theta d by d theta of sine theta dv by d theta. I'm going to fit it probably one over r squared sine squared theta. D by d, d squared by d phi squared. If you memorize that, um, you probably divert, deserve a pat on the back. Once again, there's there's three components. Each of them have a double integral. Sometimes there's this funky thing that you have to put in the middle. Um, so now what? Hopefully the focus isn't too bad. Um, well, we're going to assume azimuthal symmetry. And the reason why is because we don't want to kill ourselves. The math exists to solve these things, I believe. Uh, I haven't looked at it for a while, and unless you're paying me a lot of money, I'm not going to solve it. <laughs> um, so that means V independent of phi. Okay, so we can just drop this phi term when azimuth symmetry is in effect. And um, we're going to look for solutions that look like this. That's that theta. Looks like chubby cheeks, but that's a big capital theta. And when we plug this in to this um, differential, uh, we get 1 over r d by dr of r squared dr by dr plus 1 over capital theta sine lowercase theta d by d theta sine theta d capital theta over d theta has to equal 0 and once again there's only r terms here and there's only theta terms here so these have to be constant and the thing that he uses is he says let's set this to equal to L times L plus 1 and let's set this equal to minus L times L plus 1 and unless you've done these problems before or seen someone do them I don't know how you're gonna come up with that so kudos to the first person that figured this out okay so for the R term we just multiply both sides by R so we get D by DR of R squared d capital R by dr equals to L times L plus 1 of capital R. And the general solution to this is that R of R is equal to some constant times R to the L plus B, another constant, over R to the L plus 1. Okay. You take this and apply this derivative, you get that. Uh, for the theta term, so we have, um, how did that work? Oh yeah, so we get uh, d by d theta of sine theta d capital theta by d theta is equal to minus L times L plus 1 sine theta and capital theta. Okay, and this has a solution of Legendre polynomials. Okay? Again, don't freak out. This is not that difficult. Besides, I don't think you're gonna be asked to be doing too much with these, so. Um, um, of cos theta. And PL this is the Rodriguez formula. So P L of X is equal to 1 over 2 to the L L factorial times you didn't think that was all did you? D by DX 
the elf derivative of x squared minus 1 to the L. This is called the Rodriguez formula. Rodriguez formula. Okay. And I encourage you to calculate the first few yourself just so you know what they look like. Um, in practice, if you're given simple enough problems, you won't have to know more than a couple. Uh -huh. Let's just write out a couple. So p0 is equal to, let's see, 1 over 2 to the 0, which is 1. 0 factorial is 1. The 0 derivative of x squared minus 1 to the 0. So it's just 1. p1 is 1 over 2 to the first power times 1 times the first derivative of x squared minus 1 to the, um, the 1. So that's just 1 half of x squared. Derivative of x squared is x. P2 is a little bit more complicated. Uh, you're going to end up with 1 half of 3x squared minus 1. And P3, as you might imagine, is going to be something with an x cubed term. And this one actually is minus 3x. Okay, and from there it grows more complicated. And you can look in the book and you can have some fun with this if you want. But the important thing to notice is that P0 has no x's in it. P1 has 1x. P2 has x squared, p3 has an x cubed term. Okay. Um, so these are polynomials. Um, the Obviously this only works when you have l greater than 0 and l is, is an integer. Um, I'm not excited about finding the um, factorial of a fraction. So. If you were to try to calculate um, the like zeroth uh, Legendre polynomial, uh, oh no, here let me let me put this differently. P L of one is one, yes, for all Legendre polynomials. The in the case of when you have the azimuthal symmetry going on. Um, the most general separable solution that you can get looks like this. So V of R comma theta equals A to the RL plus uh, B over R to the L plus 1 times this Legendre polynomial of cos theta. Um, and you don't need the, the coefficient here because it's going to be, or the, 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 the factor, because it'll just be absorbed into A and B. So, and so this general solution is going to be the sum of infinite number of these terms. It's an L plus 1. Okay. And we're going to look at an example that actually uses this, so it's not time to freak out yet. Thanks. Bye.